Mac Power Users, episode 684. 20 Mac apps under 20 bucks. Hello and welcome back to Mac Power Users. My name is Stephen Hackett and I'm joined by my friend and yours, Mr. David Sparks. Hello, Professor Hackett. How are you today? Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yeah. Professor. Professor. Professor Hackett. Professor yes. Hackett. Yeah, so I uh, I was out last week. I have not listened to the episode yet, but I am excited to hear that interview. You, and then, you definitely should not. You should not. I should not you listen should to not. it? Oh, no. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Now I'm <laughs> That's suspicious. That's my way of making sure you all listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then today I got to go speak to some journalism students at my old uh, university. So that, that was fun. And uh, now I'm here with you talking about Mac apps. Pretty good day. Yeah. Yeah, what a day. What Mm -hmm. a day. Yeah. We have uh, this topic, uh, uh, these app roundup topics. We don't do them too often, but I always really enjoy them. And uh, so today we're going to do that. We're going to give you 20-ish apps under $20. That's the challenge. It has to be under $20. Mm -hmm. Uh, We actually have rules for this show, but we'll, we'll get to those in a minute. Um, and, uh, and today on more power users, what we're going to be talking about the fact I, we, you know, we talked about me deciding on an electric car and now I own an electric car. So we're going to talk about the, the Apple user element of that today on more power users. Awesome. I'm excited about that. You were keeping me up to date via text as you were going through the process. Yes. uh, Yes, man. Buying a car, man. Oof. Dude, it's the worst. (laughs) Yeah, is the worst. we can talk about that. I have I have thoughts. I'll I'll tell you about that. All right. But yeah, man. These guys, some of these guys, boy, I don't know. Oof. In the the housekeeping section, uh, we mentioned what we're doing on more power users, but I also wanted to point people to a project uh, that I recently wrapped up with our friends at Rogue Amoeba. They're the software development firm that make things like Audio Hijack, Fission, Loopback, lots of excellent mac os audio applications that i rely on as do you every day for our jobs well one of it's just running right now yep. as we record yep. the show <laughs> audio hijack is right, is right there I can touch it with my mouse they came to me last year uh talking about wanting to create a historic screenshot archive of their applications over the years uh, rogue amoeba turned 20 years old recently So it was a good time for them to kind of look back at what they've done. And they've actually been a sponsor of my uh, macOS screenshot library for several years now. And so we all felt like it was a really natural fit for me to take this on. And they have it up on their website now. There'll be a link in the show notes. And you can go see like what early versions of uh, some really well-known Mac apps, right? Audio Hijack still around today, how it looked. 20 years ago. It was so much fun. Uh, We got to go back and forth a lot because, you know, they they didn't have a perfect archive of all of their software. So we found some of it like on the Internet Archive and various places and getting the old software. A lot of it still works because a lot of their stuff doesn't have, you know, server side components or it's not reading from a web API or something. I just doing audio stuff on the Mac. So a lot of it still works and it's, you know, time capsule of running on, you know, Mac OS 10 Tiger or something. Uh, so a lot of fun. And if you like Mac history, I think that this will be a, a fun way to spend a few minutes flipping through these images. I love their software, but I feel like the original audio hijack icon has not aged well. But I, I don't want to say <laughs> anything more. I want you guys to go look at it and decide for yourself. There you go. All right. So... Let's talk about the rules. We do have rules. It has to be a Mac, Mac, Mac application. It has to be under $20. Uh, we are not limiting this. It doesn't have to be in the App Store or Setup or any other places. We always go to look for apps. It can be a developer sold you know, app with one person on their website. That's fine. But something I realized while we were trying to kind of obey those rules is that this is turning into a tough space for people to, to make Mac apps under $20. Yeah, I kind of ran to the same thing. Some apps that, you know, kind of immediately came to mind. It's like, oh, you know, oh, this is actually a lot more than that. Or they've moved to subscription, right? The the economy of Mac software is just a a hard, it's a hard business to be in. 
Uh, but at the end of the same time, we were just talking about Rogue Amoeba, right? Apps that are like really u- utility in nature that change something about the system or have hooks into the system. Some of that stuff isn't possible as macOS has become more locked down and more secure over time. And so that has also taken out some things. Some things Apple just sure locks and absorbs into the OS. But I'm really happy with our list. And I think we both did uh, a pretty good job of finding stuff that we don't, you know, doesn't get a lot of time on MPU. You know, this this, this is not the keyboard maestro, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> Hazel better touch tool list. There's a lot of yeah. fun stuff in here. And uh, I think both of us will end up downloading something as we record. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, because these apps are 20 under 20, uh, most of them are from small developers. And I would encourage you, if you um, if you decide any of these are good for you, to, to check them out. And uh, if you like them, send the uh, developer an attaboy. You know, it's 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 tough for these guys to stay in business. I, I honestly think we probably need to do another show someday, like under 50 or under 100, because mm-hmm. there's some great apps that we couldn't put on. Oh yeah, that are are still good and and reasonably priced. It's just you know people got to pay the bills, and twenty dollars for a piece of software in this day and age is is pretty tough. Um, but the uh, but we found some great ones, so uh, that's the case. There are also the other things uh, we have some Hall of Famers. We decided some apps that were discussed too much on the show that we're not going to add to our list. We'll share those with you at the end. Uh, if you are keeping score at home, you may be able to figure them out. Before we get there, but there's a couple <laughs> under under twenty that we felt mm-hmm. like. Well, this one is a great app, but we we talk about it too often. So let's just yeah. make that a Hall of Famer. Maybe we'll have to move some of these that we picked today to the Hall of Fame. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Maybe they graduate. You know, they do that on upgrade with the upgrade awards every year. If you win too many times, you get a lifetime achievement. So oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want me to go first? Yeah, lead us off. There's a little app called Daisy Disc, and man, do I love it. It's a uh, it is a visual display of the space on your Mac. We they were I guess as full disclo- disclosure they were a sponsor like ten years ago on yeah. Mac Power yeah. Users. I mean like a long time <laughs> before before Stephen was on the show when mm-hmm. they were a small small app, but they just keep doing it. And um, in terms of just interesting and unique design. Uh, something in the day, at day and age of SSD we need to keep track of is where our space is going. And, you know, there's lots of ways to do that, but the team at Daisy Disk figured out how to do it in a way that's that's really informative, but also a nice user interface, attractive. Uh, it's named after my wife. I mean, what could go <laughs> wrong? It's, it's $10, you know? I can't believe this is only $10. I was yeah, really right. surprised when I saw this on your list. I was like, no, that's more than that. It's only 10 bucks. It's wild. Yeah, 10 bucks. A great little utility to have around. And if you are especially like some, one of those folks that that is close to the edge on your SSD, often you want this. And it it breaks it down in these um, these circles that that kind of grow out of the center. So you can kind of drill down very quickly. And the visual nature of it makes it like ridiculously easy to see where the problem is. Like, uh, I, I reopened it recently and realized, oh, something flooded my Dropbox, which then got on my local drive, and that's why I'm running out of space. So, you know, but just like a glance, I had that figured out, and for ten bucks, it's a no brainer. Uh, Daisy Disk. Now you can buy it at DaisyDiskApp.com. You can also get it in the Mac App Store. This is one that I definitely rely on if I'm helping if I'm helping somebody else. You know, with especially with a notebook, maybe they got too small of an SSD, like you said. It's like, I don't understand where my space is going. And you could poke around in Finder and like open a bunch of get info windows and try to figure it out. But Daisy Disk does it really quickly, really easily, and it's visual. So you can really, like, oh, what's over here? And like follow it down the rabbit hole to, you know, you have some giant folder of stuff you forgot about. This is a very good way to start this episode. Yeah, and and like on for instance, if you don't want to spend ten dollars on this app, there is a built-in utility on the Mac now that shows you large files. Yes, like storage it's large manager. file. Yeah, but it does it as a linear list, which is hierarchical, and the the 
basic sort is start, you know, with the big ones and work your way down, but it doesn't give you an idea of where they are and how, you know, the systematic problem, like with my Dropbox problem earlier, I, I would, my, I had a lot of little files on Dropbox, so I wouldn't have found it with the Apple tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I would have found it eventually, but this is just so much better. Anyway, it's a good one. Really good. I'm going to go uh, for my next one. I'm going to stay in sort of the nerdy uh, utility arena, and I'm going to go with Discovery. Now, you may know this app as Bonjour Browser. That's, the I think, the previous name for it. It's free on the Mac App Store. There's an iOS version as well, which is cool. But what this does, you open this app, and it's just a very simple window in Mac OS, and it shows you everything uh, that is Bonjour. So Bonjour is Apple's zero configuration networking. It's how file sharing works. Like when you go to set up a printer on your Mac and it just automatically finds the printer on your network, you don't have to like find the IP address or anything. That's all Bonjour doing all of that stuff. And it gives you a list of everything on your network, what it is doing, its IP address. Not something you need every day. This, this is in the category of Daisy Disk for me of, this is a, a utility that is very helpful in certain situations. If you are trying to find something on your network and can't find it, you know, Mac OS can't find it. Or uh, if you're running a big network and maybe something's on the wrong VLAN, this can look at those sorts of things. It's nerdy. It's very particular. But it's the best thing I've seen to do this. There are some, I think there's some command line utility stuff you can do and sniff all your bonjour traffic on your network. But like Daisy Disk, it puts it in a visual tool where you can drill down and really get a sense of what's going on. Yeah, you know, this is an excellent tool. I keep it on my drive and I rarely open it, but sometimes I do need it and it's nice to have it there. And I mean, this one is free. I mean, yeah. why not just download it? Yeah, so I just opened it on mine. And so it sees uh, some AirPlay stuff, you know, it sees my um, various Eros. It sees some HomeKit stuff, like my uh, my you know various uh, hubs I have on the network. Shows you their IP addresses, all sorts of stuff. Um, it's solid. And if you're somebody who helps other people with Macs, uh, this is definitely one to have have in your applications folder. It, it, looking at my listing. Uh, there are 38 items on my list. This is not the list of a normal person, <laughs> right? No, no, not at all. That's a uh, yeah, yeah. I got 35, so you're you're ahead of me. Yeah, like, and here's something I need to look into. Uh, Amazon Alexa is showing up on my robot vacuum and my TV because I I had tried to ban Alexa from my house. In well, general. remember iRobot, so Roomba is owned by Amazon. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, and your your TV probably just does something with it. Or it has a built in or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, now I need to make sure those are not alive. I don't want I don't want them listening. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like you always find out little things when you open that little app. And <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. it's like, okay, well, there's a little project for me. Figure mm-hmm. out what the heck's going on there. Uh, I want to stay in the display stuff about my Mac. And I want to pick iStat menus. Oh, good choice. iStat, I first downloaded this. It was a widget app back when we had Mac OS widgets. You know, remember you had a separate yeah. screen with dashboard, little widgets. Baby. Yeah, dashboard. That's what it was called. Let me for widgets. And they have just managed to stick around. I mean, there have been other people that have come and gone in this space since then, but it's really evolved a lot. I mean, at this point, iStat can do a lot. It can replace your uh, your weather it can replace your clock but what i really find it useful is cpu usage uh, internet traffic and i don't keep it um, on my main menu bar but what i do is i keep it in my bartender list and then when i if something seems weird like i'm trying to upload something and it seems like it's taking a long time or my mac seems like it's slow it's like i immediately have data there and uh, some people will say, well, why don't you just load iStat when you need it? They're, they're, it's version 6 now, by the way. Um, so why don't you just load it when you need it? Well, what I like is that it doesn't take much resources at all. Um, I looked in the activity monitor, and it was barely registering. But it's historical data that's useful. Like mm-hmm. if, if things are suddenly acting weird, 
and you open it, it shows the chart over time. So you can say, well, an hour ago was fine, and now it's not. Well, what has changed in an hour? And um, I like the historical data in the background running, but I don't need to see it all the time. It's also a lot prettier than it used to be. I mean, they've really spent a lot of time making it a nice interface. And if you want to put it in your menu bar, you can like adjust the colors, the way it looks, and what shows up. Uh, it's a it's a really powerful tool. It's really cool, and it's ten bucks uh, to upgrade, or you can buy it outright for twelve bucks. And then they have uh, a family pack, so you can use it up to five Macs. So if you're a multiple Mac person, or maybe you and somebody else going together and to get it. Uh, yeah, when I think about Mac utilities, right? Like if in some sort of weird psychological testing, if the person with the clipboard just says Mac utilities, yeah, this is in the top three or four. Because of all the stuff you said, you can see so many things. All of this stuff is available to you across a range of tools built into the OS, right? You can open Activity Monitor. You can look at your battery. You can do all these things. But ISAT Mini puts it all in one place and you can just customize the heck out of it. So if there are things that, you know, maybe are important to you as a notebook user, maybe you have it configured differently to someone who's using a desktop Mac, right? It's it's really cool. And they've done a great job of evolving it. I, I remember when, uh, like with the Apple Silicon transition, right? Or even with the Mac Pro, you know, kind of new hardware. Like they've got a figure out, you know, they've got to look at all the sensors in that hardware, figure out where the system reports, you know, what are these fans doing? What is this doing? What is that doing? And I just have to imagine, I don't know, but I have to guess from the outside, that is such a treadmill to be on because Apple's always got something going on in the Mac line, but they keep it up to date and they keep it fresh and it is just as useful today as it has ever been. Yeah, I, I bought the family pack like a long time ago and I remember installing it on my wife's my wife's computer and her saying, "What? What is this?" <laughs> and I was thinking, "Why did I buy the family pack? Nobody in my family cares about any of this stuff, right? You know, mm -hmm. they will never say, oh, I noticed my internet traffic has slowed down.' Well, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> I, I was always a sucker for those family packs. I used to buy the family packs for the uh, the Mac OS upgrades. You know, oh, yeah. I used to sell it and. Mm -hmm. uh, and and there was like plenty of evidence at the time that you didn't need to like that oh, if yeah. you bought the single one or the family one. It was the it same OS in that box, man. It was yeah, <laughs> I, but I always felt like you know that was soon enough after Apple was on the ropes that I was like, well, what if they go under and I'll feel bad because I won't have my Mac anymore? And yeah, I don't think your thirty dollars is what broke it, but I, I like where your heart is. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. It was before the <laughs> iPhone and it's you true. know all that. But yeah. But yeah, it, it, I'm a sucker for family packs. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> you, okay. love, you love shopping at Sam's and Costco, you know, do it all. In oh, Sam. oh, man, do you, it, we, it, it is a fun trip there, but, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, but there's only two of us now, Steven. So that's the problem. So what happens is we go there and then our kids come and just take it all. Right. They come shopping. Their Sam's or Costco is mm -hmm. my house. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny. I was at my mom's a couple of weeks ago. I just dropped by to take care of something, help her with something. And I like went in and like got something to drink out of the fridge. And she was like, yep, yeah. same as it ever was. <laughs> yeah. There, my kids told me there's like a meme for kids their age about going to their parents' house and just emptying it of like food and, you know, necessities, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, taking out like a box of toilet paper or something. And <laughs> you're just like, okay, you know. Thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. Yeah, my, my wife told me that the definition of a mother, having a daughter, she said, having a daughter is having like a little friend that's a little poor friend that thinks you're rich. That's what she <laughs> said. That's what's having a mother. Is. <laughs> I like that. And I'm like, you know what? I think you're kind of right. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I stat menu, guys. Oh, that one is available on setup as well. So if you have a setup subscription, I don't think they're sponsoring today. I don't even know who our sponsors are today. But the um, but setup, if you like little utilities, is also worth checking out. It's ten dollars a month, and uh, you can get a lot of these just kind of loaded up. Up next for me is a, a utility called AirBuddy, and AirBuddy started life, if I have my memory straight, as a uh, basically a way to more efficiently in a less buggy fashion. 
uh, manage your AirPods with your Mac. You know, Apple has the feature where if you're listening to something on your Mac and then you listen to something on your iPhone, the audio and your AirPods will jump to the phone like it's trying to figure out. Uh, that's been better for me recently than it has been in the past. But uh, some people didn't want uh, that turned on or they wanted more features. And that's where AirBuddy kind of came from. It's a menu bar app on the Mac, but it has evolved and grown to really become Bluetooth status and control for Mac OS. And so you can do things like set up battery alerts. So if one of your Bluetooth devices, you know, the AirPods Pro you have in your pocket, in the case, if that battery runs low or if it's finished charging, you can set those thresholds and it will send you a notification on your Mac. You know, there's nothing worse than you pop an AirPod in and like five minutes later, you hear the little sad like, you know, like it's yeah. it's, it's yeah. low on battery. Um, so you can see the battery of all your Bluetooth devices. You can manage them. Uh, you can change their names. You can even get status for Bluetooth devices attached to nearby Macs. So if you're like a two Mac person and, you know, say that you're on your laptop and you need to say, oh, like, you know, what's the Bluetooth keyboard situation like in my iMac? You can see that too. It's so impressive what this app has been able to adopt. It has shortcut support, like all yeah, sorts of you, stuff. You stole my thunder there, but that's yeah. it. Like if you want to do like automation stuff related to audio, this is one of the few apps that embrace shortcuts for that. And uh, so you can have AirBuddy go in and you can run shortcuts through AirBuddy, AirBuddy to, to manage this stuff for you via shortcuts. And for me, that's like, that's like I'm in. Yeah. In fact, there's a couple on the list today because of their shortcut support. So if you're a developer and you're listening and you want to get in on the Mac Power Users, don't write me annoying email. Just put shortcuts in your app. <laughs> oh, did I say too much? No, no, it's, it's good. <laughs> I, I like that. And and so, yeah, everybody is really awesome. It's at version two now. It's on set app or you can buy it from the uh, from the developer's website. All these links are in the show notes. It's $13. And well worth it. Um, if you, you know, we all are dealing with Bluetooth stuff now. And it's just, it, it adds a level of polish and power above what the system does that I appreciate. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by 1Password. 1Password is the easiest way to store and use strong passwords. Go to onepasswordcom slash MPU to get 20% off your plan. If you've got a small or a medium or even a big size company, Password security is essential. You do not want the people that work for you sticking passwords on sticky notes on their computers, and you definitely don't want them using the same password at multiple websites. You also don't want them walking out the door with all your passwords one day when they're not happy with you. Well, you can solve all of those problems with 1Password for Business. It's trusted by over 100,000 businesses like Slack, IBM, GitHub, and Under Armour. Security is an organizational habit, and with 1Password, you can make a really smooth workflow for everyone to have strong and unique passwords for everything they do related to the company. But there's a reason for the big success 1Password has in these companies, because it's a human-centric security approach. When security tools help you get things done instead of getting in your way, that's when people actually use them. With a 1Password for Business account, you can still share passwords out with anyone safely and securely, and everyone in the business gets a free 1Password Families account. So there's an idea. Go to work tomorrow and convince your boss to do 1Password for Business, and then you get 1Password for your family for free. With 1Password, security isn't just a feature, it's the foundation. Uh, I've spent time with the people at 1Password. They are obsessive about protecting your security. You want them at your back, not only at home, but at work. So go check out 1Password.com. Check on the Businesses tab up there. In fact, actually go to 1Password.com slash MPU. You can get 20% off your account. Go check it out now and start protecting your business today. And our thanks to 1Password for all of their support of the Mac Power Users. You know how I said you can get on the list if you have shortcut support? Yeah. You can go to the top of my list if you add cool Apple Script support. And <laughs> the, well, I mean, there's a couple of unique problems. In fact, I might want to group two here because okay. they work together. But the first one is Moom. 
And this one almost didn't go on the list because we talk about it enough on the show. I think people have already heard of it. But there are, if you go on the Mac App Store, there are like 17 apps that let you arrange your windows. And some of them are very good. And then you also can do it like using things, other you know services like that do it as well. Um, Raycast has some cool stuff built in for it. Uh, you can do it with Keyboard Master. There's, a, there's like a, a lot of ways to manage windows. I've tried them all, and I'm telling you, Moom is the one you should use. Um, it's just so good. Uh, they've solved all the little problems. They make it easy to rearrange your windows in a way that makes sense. They give you options to leave little gaps and things. Um, but what's really cool is they have, or one of my favorite features, is they have the ability to set up your apps in a certain format, you know? And then you can tell Moom, hey, next time I have these apps open, if I trigger this, rearrange the apps exactly like they are now. So like, as an example, when I podcast, the left two thirds of the screen are Safari because we run our show notes out of Safari. We do a bunch of all the researches in Safari. Everything's there. Then on the upper half of the right uh, third, you know, this, the third third, does that make sense? You sure. know, on the right side, the right third, there we go. The top is the zoom tools. The bottom is the audio hijack tool. So I've got everything I need on this screen. Totally fine. I have a much bigger screen than Steven. So that's, that's just the way it is. <laughs> um, but you know, what Moom did was said, oh yeah, people like to trigger that without having to go in and push a button in the app. We'll add keyboard shortcuts so you can make custom keyboard shortcuts for it. But that's not enough. The guy at Moom also said, well, I'm going to write Apple Script support for my app. So it's a one-line Apple Script. The people in the labs know about this because I already shared a video of how to do it. But it's like a one line of Apple Script that you can drop into a shortcut or a keyboard master script or anywhere you want and say, hey, open all these apps. And by the way, arrange them exactly the way I want them, according to Moom, with this one line of Apple Script. And it's just such a game changer to get things set up. And I use, I use Moom all the time for that reason. I think it's a, just an awesome little app uh, in a crowded space, but it just continues to, uh, to shine. And this one, I guess I would also just give a shout out to Mini Tricks. Um, this is a company that focuses on making little helpful utilities. Uh, and it came up on the show recently. Um, I don't remember. Was it the Ian? You know, we make a lot of shows here, gang. We but do. <laughs> I talked about many tricks lately, and and they're just a great little. I think it was the Ian Bird, the show that uh, Stephen refuses to listen to. Wow. The um, yeah. Well, I mean, you said it. You That's did not say what that. I said it all. <laughs> yeah, but either way, uh, yeah, Moom, and uh, Boom. It, yeah. it's yeah, and you can get it's ten bucks. You can get it in the Mac App Store. You can get it directly from the from the uh, developer. And this one, I would recommend just get it from them. Let them get all the money. Don't give any to Apple. Apple's yeah. got enough. They've got, all, they've got all those fat checks from me buying the family pack of the operating <laughs> system 10 years ago. They're good. Yeah. Yeah. M- Moom is, is awesome. Um, I think I mentioned it in the, in the menu bar doc episode, maybe I've been playing with magnet, yeah. uh, which is very similar uh, it does not have Apple script support. I don't think so. That's, that is a point in Moom's corner. Uh, but I, I will probably end up back at Moom, but I wanted to give magnet, uh, a fair shake. Cause I think the way it thinks about things is pretty different than Moom. But like you said, there's a lot of these in the app store, so you can find something that works for you. Yeah. And, and if you're happy with the one you have, that's cool. Oh, you yeah, don't need definitely. to switch, but the, um, but the, I really like this one because of the customizability and because of it, how automation friendly it is. And nothing makes me happier than sitting down at my computer to say, well, I'm going to do this particular project or task, push a button on my stream deck and just watch my computer put itself together so I can do that job. Yeah, that is cool. It's like having a little assistant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the related one, um, which is, is display menu, you know, again, there's a bunch of apps they talk about how to set up your screen resolution. Display menu is one of many, but they did the same thing. They added an Apple script command so I can change my display menu from you know um, you know wide resolution to to um, higher uh, pixel count resolution. I can just change my display menu anytime I want. Uh, for someone who podcasts, it's a big deal. Um, we talked about this on the show. I actually shared that script for the Mac Power Users listeners um, last month. 
And I heard from a bunch of people who have a lot of good reasons to do that. I heard from an x-ray tech who likes to make it bigger when he's looking at his images. And like, there's a bunch of different people that have that need. And Apple has never made it easy. And display menu, like Moom said, okay, now we figured out how to do the thing that people can't do elsewise. Now let's make it possible for them to automate it. And again, it's a one-line Apple script. I want to talk uh, a little bit about a relatively new, I think it's new, a markdown editor for the Mac. And this one is open source. It's on the Mac App Store. We'll have a link to the GitHub page in the in the show notes. Uh, you can download it from there as well. And it is just a very straightforward, really clean uh, markdown editor. And I've used Byword for years and years, uh, but have, have uh, from time to time moved uh, around looking at other things. And for me, this is just me, as much as I love like IA Writer, for example, most of the markdown I do on my Mac is like ephemeral. So like right now, as we record shows, I have a button on my stream deck and it puts a timestamp in a text document and then I get a text field and says, you know, what happened? So when we record an ad or, you know, someone wants to restate something, I can do it very quickly. I don't necessarily need that in a text editor that's syncing with iCloud and doing all these things, right? I just, I need this this file. I copy and paste the contents of it and then it's gone. And so I've been playing with, uh, with Mark edit and I've been really impressed with it. It's just pretty simple, pretty straightforward, uh, but surprisingly customizable And, and not in a way, you know, some text editors have so many options. It's like overwhelming. Right, like you can build a whole universe unto itself inside the app. This just has kind of what I consider the most important things, and you can do some theming to it, and and really make something that that works for you. And uh, I've been I've been pretty happy with it so far. And it it's like I said, it's you can get it on GitHub, you can get it at the Mac App Store. Uh, it's free, and uh, I've been uh, I've been enjoying my time with it. Yeah. I I thought we are you still using Tot? Uh, I do I do have Tot. The Tot has kind of become for me like a, a like notepad. a weirdo version of Text Expander. Okay, like, I have oh, some right. things in I Tot. Didn't see that, that one. Yeah, yeah I, I have. I mean, I love and use Text Expander, but uh, for instance, I have one of my dots in Tot is like a ver- uh, kind of a bunch of very common things I need to send to members, like kind of boilerplate support answers. And they probably will end up in text expander at some point, but I've been massaging them over time. And they're like in Tot. So kind of kind of random uh, different things. But Tot is self, it's like a self-enclosed app. Like everything is just within Tot. And MarkEdit uh, just is like, a regular kind of old school app that can just open files in Finder. And so that's kind of where it has taken over for me. Yeah, makes sense. I got a weird one, but I think people might dig this. It's called MakePass. Yeah, I, I've heard of this, but I haven't really ever played with it. So what? where does this fit? So if you have like a barcode, like a loyalty card or something that's got, that gets scanned when you go places and you're always struggling with like, getting to it or like um you you put it in the um you put like a picture in your photo album or something like that like i have a this is a very first world problem but when we go to disneyland we have a special thing they can scan to when they take pictures of us they have like um they call it photo pass right you want a picture you and your wife together in front of the castle there's a person who takes a picture of you and then they scan this code and then it goes into the app for you um and it was always a struggle. And then I had some other things like that, loyalty cards, whatnot. And uh, I heard about this app, MakePass, and I downloaded it and checked it out. And it's it's pretty cool. So you can what you do is you can manually create um, wallet um, passcodes. You know, the things like when you get a movie ticket or a credit card or whatever, and you go into the wallet on your phone, and you can, like, scroll through those. Like, airplane boarding passes is probably the one most people are familiar with, right? You just... Open it up, you show it to them, it stays on the screen, and then you can use it or delete it. Well, this allows you to make your own. You can set custom colors, you can set titles, um, you know, you can make it 
look really cool. And it's just on your phone. It, it like one more step towards turning your phone into a wallet replacement. And if you're someone who doesn't like to carry a lot of cards and identification things, this is really great. Uh, it doesn't duplicate the magnetic strip thing. Like if you've got, you know, like with my insurance, when I go to the doctor, right. they, have to, they have to swipe the magnetic. So it doesn't do that. But anything that can scan a code, mm -hmm. this can replace. As far as I've experienced so far, maybe there's limitations I haven't That's found. Cool. But for 10 But for 10 bucks, it's worth a try. And uh, it's also just kind of the nerdy thing that I like. Did you hear that? Siri just went off. I don't know oh, why. Hello, Siri. Anyway, uh, here's an idea. Why don't we make Siri obey focus modes? <laughs> uh, check back after WBDC, I guess. Okay. But anyway, uh, Make Pass is pretty cool. And uh, it's just it's such a weird app, but it does exactly what it says on the tin. And if you've got things that you scan and you want to just keep them on your phone, check it out. Yeah, so I, I downloaded it while you were talking. It's like, well, it's a, it's a Mac app. How do you get stuff on your phone? Where well, there's just a button that says send to wallet. And by the time I picked my phone up off the charging puck, the little just like test one I made in three seconds was already there. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. I had an issue a couple of weekends ago. I went to a basketball game with my dad and my brother and I bought, you know, sort of, uh, secondhand tickets from like StubHub or something, you know, sort of ticket reseller. Yeah. And yeah. most of the time, those apps don't have wallet integration. They want you to like open their app and like scan from there. So I'm like in line, right? There's a billion people there trying to get into the game. I'm like fiddling around with whatever ticketing app it was trying to find them. And this would have saved me so much headache. So this is now on my phone and Mac. So this is at least my first download for the day. Yeah. Well, you have to manually create them because obviously they it can't just go find them for you. Right. But I could like pull those QR codes off whatever that app was, right? Or like save screenshots of them and put them in a pass. That's cool. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go next uh, with a uh, just a, a an app that I didn't have a need for until very recently. But it's like the quintessential... Mac utility that it does basically one thing and one thing really well, and that's keyboard clean tool. So this is from uh, the same shop as Better Touch Tool, Better Snap Tool. So I've moved to a MacBook Pro as my primary machine, and I, I love the way it looks, but the black keys, you know, they show finger grease and stuff, and occasionally you want to wipe it down. Well, doing that with the computer on and awake is like asking for trouble, right? Because who knows yeah. where those keyboard strokes are going. Yeah. And if you turn the Mac off, any key strike turns it on and they boot up instantly, basically. Yeah. So what keyboard <laughs> clean tool does, and it's free, just a Mac app. You hit a button in the Mac app with the cursor and it locks the keyboard until you click that button again with your trackpad or mouse. And it just, it does what it says on the tin. It locks out all keyboard input. You can, you know, wipe down your keyboard or whatever and then move about your day. And it's like, Totally solved this problem that I didn't have before, but in the this world of black keyboards, you know they they say they get a little dirty sometimes, and uh, this is a great way to clean it really easily. Yeah, and it's a free download. Uh, Andreas, free, the guy be, I got the guy behind Better Touch Tool um, had a day job, and then he gave it up to make Better Touch Tool full time, which is why it just keeps getting amazing. But also, he's scratching his own itches and sharing them with us. I, this is mm -hmm. amazing. I, I, you know, I have um, a, my main Mac has a keyboard on it that I can just turn off and clean. You know, but that's not the case if you have a laptop. This app it solves the perfect problem there. Yeah, it's nice. really cool. And just you know, I love. I think we both have an attraction sort of like simple, like kind of kind of one trick pony apps, right? Like, what does this do? It locks your keyboard so you can clean it. Perfect. I don't need to do anything else. <laughs> one trick pony apps that are done with panache. You know, I mean, like yes. they, they, they don't look like a Windows ninety five app. They look <laughs> like somebody cared about it and like wanted to make it nice. You know. Mm -hmm. This episode of Mac Power Users is made possible by Text Expander. Get your team communicating faster so they can focus on what's most important. With Text Expander, your team's knowledge is always at their fingertips. 
You can get everyone on the same page, get information out of silos and into the hands of everyone who needs to use it. This means you can share your team's knowledge across departments so everyone is sending unified messaging to your customers and they're not all spending time reinventing the wheel. So here's how it works. First, you store it. Keep your company's most used emails, phrases, messaging, URLs, and more right within Text Expander. And then you share it. You get your whole team access to all the content they need. You can organize it by department, and then they can expand it, deploying the content you need with just a few keystrokes on any device across any apps in use. It really is that easy. Text Expander is available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, and iPad. And I honestly could not do my job without it. I have hundreds of things in Text Expander. If it's not on a computer I'm at, that computer feels broken. So if you're ready to sign up, go to textexpander.com slash MPU. There you'll get 20% off your first year. Once again, that URL is textexpander.com slash MPU. I should have mentioned this one earlier when you talked about Mark Edit, but uh, Mark II has, I feel like, kind of fallen off the radar for a lot of people. But that is the Markdown preview app that Brett Terpstra has made. He made it the first version a long time ago. Now he's at Mark II. But like with everything Brett does, uh, it is way over delivered on. I mean, it, it, is, it does way more than just preview Markdown. You know, it's a. Um, it's an application that allows you to see formatted text in just about any way you want. And then it allows you to copy it, you know, in just about any way you want. It's it's just, it is very much a text tool. Um, he's also added like grammar checking to it and, um, you know, writer's tools. And Brett's a guy who is very interested in writing well. And he, uh, did I say that right? Did you say writing well? Is that yes, it? yep. Yeah, there you go. And so he's uh, he's got all that in the, in the app, and it's thirteen bucks, I think now. I mean, it's, it's just kind of silly. Oh, it's fourteen bucks, thirteen ninety nine. But it's kind of silly how little money he's charging for an app with this many features. Yeah, Mark II really is incredible. I mean, especially doing like long form markdown work, like if you're writing a really long article or you know books or scripts or something. It is nice to have your preview separate from your editor. A lot of editors, you can kind of flip back and forth, right? Yeah. Uh, like Byword has that. You can hit a keyboard command and you see the preview and then hit the keyboard command again and go back to your markdown. But Mark II is something that I reach for. If I'm doing something long form and I want to see the preview and my text at the same time. And it updates instantly. And like you said, you can export it and do all sorts of stuff. Um, there's lots of theming options in marks too as well so you can customize it to kind of fit what you're doing uh it's fantastic and and brett is definitely one of those developers who um wants his tools to be as as flexible and as universal as possible so yes it's a markdown previewer but it also does all this other wild stuff a couple of features i want to point out in particular one is link validation so if you write for the web this app will actually go and check all your links for you to make sure they're valid. So That's you don't cool. put invalid links. And um, it also auto generates a table of contents if you use Markdown format. So you get a table of contents for free and then you can jump to it. Like it, it creates a table of contents and then you can mouse to any heading and jump to it. Like Stephen was saying, if you're doing long form writing, uh, that's a feature that every editor should have, but very few do actually do. But if you use marked, then you've uh, you get it for free. Or at least thirteen ninety nine. What else do you have on your list? Uh, a little dumb one, but it's one that I still find myself using. Eject Bar. It's just a little utility app. I think it's like two bucks in the Mac App Store. Uh, and I do know that I can write Apple scripts to do this, and I do know that I can run this out of, uh, you know, you know, Alfred or you know, all these things have ways to eject. But there's something about having a little button in your menu bar you press and it ejects everything. And if you're someone that uh, has, like Stephen, like your new setup, if you want to just make sure you properly ejected all your drives before you grab that new laptop and hit the road, you push one button in your menu bar and it's done. I think that's a that's a very useful app. And uh, for some of us automation nerds, there are other ways to do this. But particularly if there's someone in your life 
who isn't going to do an Alfred script, you know, <laughs> instead they're just going to yank the drive out and just, you know, pray or not even care or realize what's happening. Uh, this is a great thing. You can teach someone, Hey, before you unplug, just push this one button in the menu bar and it'll eject everything for you. I love it. It's very cool. For a long time, I used an app that was similar to this called, I think it was called mountain. Yeah. That was a popular one for a long time. Yeah. But I think that one went away. Yeah, it's still, it looks like it's still on the Mac app store, but I don't know uh, how how actively it's developed. Like it's compatibility with Snow Leopard. So I don't, I don't yeah. know if it's still around. I kind of, at some point moved away from it and then um, haven't replaced it. But yeah, eject bar looks really cool. You know, sitting here right now, I've got two external volumes plugged in. I've got my time machine and then my, nightly clone for some reason that's mounted at the moment it's not supposed to be but it is and yeah you could go and eject each one but a lot of people don't and you can even in the world of apfs you still can cause damage to a volume by just ripping the cable out without ejecting it safely and uh, this looks like a a great way to make that easy for people yeah and a plus is this is made by nine to five max own benjamin mayo very cool it's it's one of one of the gang trying to make their living talking about this stuff and uh, just a good little app. Very cool. I'm gonna uh, also mention an app by uh, somebody we know, and that is Broadcasts by uh, Stephen Trout Smith. Uh, Stephen is a, a noted uh, developer on Apple's platforms, but also is very insightful when it comes to Apple's platforms. If you're on Mastodon and not following. Uh, Stephen, you you really should be. Uh, lots of interesting experiments and and a lot of good commentary, especially on the development side of things. I think he's like the original Apple spelunker, the guy that would yeah. go through the builds and find all the secrets. Mm-hmm. He has an app called Broadcasts, and it's on the Mac, iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Apple Watch, everything. And it lets you stream audio from the web. So when you download it, it's free with an in-app purchase, I think of $4.99. But it has a a collection of like radio stations you can listen to, but you can also plug in basically any streaming audio URL. So if you listen to shows on Relay FM that record live or like ATP when they record live, uh, other examples, you can plug those URLs into broadcasts and listen instead of on the web, listen in broadcasts. It's even uh, one of the few third-party CarPlay apps. So you can even listen uh, through the CarPlay interface like we spoke about on that episode a couple of months ago. Um, I really love this app. In fact, we recently on the Relay website uh, changed our live streaming page to include a link to broadcast and like a, a special URL that if you click once you have broadcast installed, it sets up the live stream for you in the app. Uh, Steven helped me get that built. And it's it's just really nice, really well-polished. Really, anything in Steven's library of apps that he develops could be on this episode. Uh, I chose Broadcast because it's my current favorite, but uh, his whole collection of of apps that he develops, they're all really nice, really well-polished. Most of them are as cross-platform as can be, which is really nice. And um, yeah, as someone who, who listens to a fair bit of live podcast recording... Uh, I do it in broadcast, even on my Mac, where I could just open a browser tab, you know, oh, accidentally closed the tab or got lost somewhere where I just know it's in broadcast and uh, waiting for me when I'm ready. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another one I have, I have a couple mini tricks apps here, and this wasn't, this was kind of by accident. I just went and looked at the apps I've got that I use. I didn't realize some of these were made by them. One of which is Name Mangler. and. um, there are several na- renaming apps, you know, file renaming apps on the Mac over the years. Um, what I like about this one is it is it's powerful, but it's also easy to use. So many of these always felt to me like one of those little logic puzzles you had to go through to get the name files renamed, and um, it's very easy to to get overwhelmed with you know the way some of the they just not designed that well, you know, some of them. And this one is the opposite of that. It makes it super easy if you want to go and rename your photos or uh, if you've got a bunch of imports from work that you need to sequence or whatever you want to do. It's got all the the options you need. And, uh, you know, it's a good app. 
uh, the, uh, the price is $19, so they just made it right mm-hmm. on the show. But uh, if you need to do any kind of file renaming, this is, I think this is the one. Yeah, I have, uh, what do I have installed? A, a better finder rename, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, like I said, there are many ways to do this. And, and even Apple, like in Finder, they have some renaming tools, but they're very simple. It's like basically two or three things. And very often I need, I need more than that. I mean, the example you mentioned, right, have a lot of files from work you need to put in some sort of order. Um, for me, often it's downloading files that maybe the name, like the file name is not what I want in Finder, right? Like I want to name it something more sane than whatever I downloaded it from, particularly if it's going to end up in Dev and Think before the, the day is done. And so having tools like this, it's kind of once you have something like this, I feel like you just want to rename stuff to make it better because you know that you can. And uh, yeah, Name Mangler is, is pretty sweet. Can I guess your other mini tricks app? Yeah, okay. you can. Okay, so I'm looking through their list. They have a lot of great things. Uh, they have something to set your display resolution, but you have a solution for that. Uh, you uh, that you got, there's desktop curtain, which like hides things from your desktop for screenshots and things. I'm uh, covering that one with the, uh, with the clean shot X. Clean so shot X. Uh, what about uh menu where? Yeah, that's the one. That's man. the one. That's yeah. The menu where is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that one is the thing we mentioned, I believe in the last show, but it, lets you to right click anywhere on the screen and get your menus. Yeah. And if you got a big screen, you know, I, I do have a bigger screen than you, Steven at this point. So that's, it's probably a bigger problem for me, but the, um, <laughs> but if I, if I right click, I get the menus anywhere I want them. I don't keep this turned on all the time. It depends on context, what I'm doing, but uh, I do like using it for certain operations. Uh, if I'm using an app that I'm not that familiar with, um, a lot of like, like, uh, Pixelmator Pro is a great example. I like to use it for Pixelmator Pro because I'm not a professional photo editor and there's a lot of stuff in the menus in, in Pixelmator Pro. So I thought, yeah, this is good. And a uh, nice little app from Minitrix. I'm the same way. I've got, I've got it downloaded. It's not something I run all the time, but in a lot of circumstances, it really is fantastic. And you kind of think, well, like, well, how does that work? Like you right click and you get your menus. Well, if you're in Finder and you right click and you get like new folder, get info, change wallpaper, it looks like that. But instead of that stuff, it is Finder, File, Edit, View. All the stuff across the top gets put into a contextual menu behind the right yeah. click. And yeah. it's, it, I, I hadn't really thought about it in the sense of like exploring a new app because that is, that's a great tip. That's a great way to learn what an app can do is spend a few minutes just looking through its menus because all the big stuff will be in a menu somewhere more than likely. So this is a, this is a cool way to surface that. All right. Give us another one. All right. I'm going to go with a uh, Downy. Uh, Downy is a, uh, a Mac app that lets you download video from the internet. It's uh 1999. So also just right, right below our, our threshold of 20 bucks, but you can, uh, it has some browser extensions or you can like copy a URL and paste it into Downy to download from YouTube or Vimeo or a bunch of other places. It also gives you a lot of control of how that video is treated once it's downloaded. So something that I use Downy for a fair bit, not a ton, but a fair bit is if I am, uh, you know, if I come across a, an interview with somebody that I want, you know, very clearly it's just an interview on YouTube, right? Not something that, really I need to watch, I will download it with Downy and tell Downy, just save the audio out of this. I don't need the video. Just give me the audio. And then I I will upload that to Overcast uh, Premium to listen to, you know, with smart speed, you know, like any other podcast. Um, But it's also great for archival purposes, right? If you have, say, an Apple history library that you're slowly building, you come across a video you don't have, you can download it. Um, Downy definitely is one of those apps that um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. I actually kind of don't like its UI, but it's the best tool that I've used in this category. And one reason for that is that it is updated all the time. Uh, So if you go to download something and it gives you an error, chances are there's a Downy update and they are working to 
keep up with all these video providers and how they, you know, YouTube doesn't want you to download stuff. So Downey's kind of playing cat and mouse, but it gets the job done better than anything I've tried. And I've even done, you know, like uh, all sorts of stuff over the years, but Downey is the most reliable that I've, that I've come across. Yeah. And that's also part of setup. And I was going to say earlier, the reason why it's right under the limit here, 1999 is that this isn't a, a build it and forget it kind of app. You know, like ejecting your external drives isn't going to take a lot of maintenance, but Downey <laughs> is constantly playing this cat and mouse game with these companies that don't really want you downloading the video. And yeah, well, another advantage of Downey is, you know, you avoid the YouTube algorithm. Like when you watch stuff on YouTube, they're always collecting data on you. They're trying to give you more stuff to tempt you to watch and going on YouTube to do a short research project and watch a couple of videos turns into a three hour marathon session about, you know, the subtleties of why episode eight of star Wars was, was wrong. <laughs> That's just a random example. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. So what I'll do is I'll go in and download, like I was just doing one the other day on something that I'm looking into. And I just downloaded a couple videos on it with Downey. I watched them. Then I went off the grid. Uh, YouTube was not part of that relationship anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I added another one because I feel like I, I let the audience down a little bit because I forgot we talked about menuware very recently. Okay. So I have I have an extra for you. Um, this one is from another small development house, uh, Hootaspot. Um, they made uh, uh, they've made several apps over the years. They have some apps uh, concerning GPS camera data, but they've always had these kind of like out on apps for Finder search. Yeah. And Finder search is pretty good, but Huda makes it easier. And uh, the the app they have now, it's sixteen dollars in the Mac App Store. It's called Timbo Two T E M B O, uh, and it's the second version of it. Got a cute little elephant icon, and it just makes uh, Finder search a lot easier. Uh, I feel like some Mac Power users are probably not going to need an app like this, but I can tell you it does make it easier and faster. And uh, uh, I, check it out, you know, before you just go buy it. But I think for a lot of folks, having a little more power to Finder search could be really useful. I used it just a few weeks ago. I had to go dig something out of the old law practice files for somebody, and I used Timbo, and it it made short work of it. That's really cool. Yeah. Huda Software makes all sorts of great Mac utilities. Uh, Huda Geo is what you mentioned, where you can tag, add GPS data to photos that you took with a camera without GPS. Uh, But they also have Huda Spot, which is like a more full-featured search. We spoke about that years ago in like our Finder replacement episode. But all sorts of really uh, powerful, neat Mac utilities. So I had not come across Timbo. I'm going to give this a shot. Yeah, I you know I met that guy a long time ago at MacWorld when they had Tiny Town. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know where he's from, but he had flown in with his dad, and uh, I had a very nice conversation with him. just a really nice guy who's super conscientious. I mean, what makes the Mac a great platform, without a doubt, is the software developers, and this this guy kind of is one of those. You know, just makes great stuff. You can tell he puts a lot of love and care into his apps, and and I always like supporting those small developers. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's it really is one reason the Mac OS is such a, a special place to be, and it, those utilities feel different than they do on the iPhone. For you know, because a lot of the stuff, a lot of these we talked about can run in the background, right? Using something like uh, Eject Bar or uh, iStat Menus or Moom, you know, some of the ones you've mentioned they can run all the time and they're just there either, you know, quietly changing the way something happens in the system or giving you extra information or something like that. And it, it does make the Mac, uh, more useful to a lot of people, but you can also, you know, customize your Mac. Some of the stuff, you know, some of the stuff you've mentioned, some of the stuff I mentioned, you know, some people may not care about, but others may be like, Oh, that's exactly what I need. This solves this one specific problem, my workflow. And that's where the Mac still sort of stands alone in the Apple ecosystem, I think. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by ZocDoc. Find the right doctor right now with ZocDoc at ZocDoc.com slash MPU. If you've ever stewed over a health problem you have, you know the temptation to text a pal or even the whole group chat to get your friend's opinions. You're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your group chat, but you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. 
Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. And they treat almost every condition under the sun. I have struggled with finding a doctor that both is under my insurance and is a good doctor and understands what it's like to take care of other humans. Well, ZocDoc solves all of those problems. Rather than using out-of-date insurance information, ZocDoc has the app. You go in it, you pick a doctor, you find out if they have your insurance, you see what the patient reviews are like, and you're good to go. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. And that's where ZocDoc really comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. So book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. So go to ZocDoc.com slash MPU and download the ZocDoc app for free. And then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash MPU. ZocDoc.com slash MPU gets you those answers, gets you a good doctor, and our thanks to ZocDoc for the support of the Mac Power users and all of Relay FM. All right. Give us another one, Stephen. All right. I am going to go with Image Optum. So this is a uh, little Mac app. Uh, You can download it for free. It's open source. And it is a tool to crush images. So we mentioned at the top of the show the the big rogue amoeba project I did. And... I didn't do this with them because they wanted, you know, full-size images. But if you have a bunch of images you're uploading to the web or going to send to somebody, full res may not be what you want. Full full uh, size, you know, full um, EXIF data. You may not want that sort of thing. And so Image Optim is a Mac app. You can drag images into it and it will then, ex- you know, resave them in place with, uh, higher compression or whatever settings you want. There's loads of settings in here, lots of different compression you can apply. And uh, it's pretty great. I mean, I publish a lot of photos on the web and there are certain images that I run through this to bring down the file size because I don't want to serve, you know, absolutely massive images to everybody. And it's cool and it's free. Again, you can do this. Like you could open them all in Photoshop and export them out or uh, you know, you could have, in fact, I have a shortcut that strips GPS metadata out of images. So if I upload an image to like to 512 pixels, it doesn't have GPS information on it. Uh, but you can also do all of that in this. And you can uh, you can uh, download it directly from their site. Again, it's free. It's been, uh, been pretty sweet. Okay, you got me. Is that your one? Is that your download? Yeah. Got yes. It. Got it. I don't know how I didn't know about this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lifesaver and you can batch stuff. So you can like drop like 30 photos on it and it'll just chew through them. It's what, a great fun- way. It's a, it's one of those things like, Oh, this actually gets Apple Silicon up and up and up and running, you know? Yeah. You can actually, you can actually push the processor with it. I, you know, Steven and I, for these types of shows, we actually don't get on and discuss them in advance. We just kind of roll yeah. and, uh, that's one of the fun things about these shows is I get to learn stuff as well. Uh, I've, I've taken a couple extras, but I've got ahead of you. But I'm going to give you my last one right now. Okay. And this is a weird one, but I find I continue to use this app. The first time I heard of it, I'm like, really? And it's called Hazeover. And have you ever heard of this app, Hazeover? I, I have. This is the one that will, it like dims background windows. Exactly. So if you want to focus on a window, but you have more than one window open, I mean, there's ways you can do that. Like you can hide all the windows or whatever, but maybe you don't want to hide them all, but you just want to keep your focus on a particular window. Hazeover will, it's got a bunch of settings, but the way I use it, it keeps the primary window I'm working in active and then everything behind it gets a little like, uh, like a dark glass over the front of it. So uh, it allows you to really focus on that area screen. And I, I don't know if you're aware of this, Stephen, but I have a bigger monitor than you. So sometimes I've got a lot of a lot of windows open on my screen. 
and I need to focus. <laughs> but yeah, Haze Over. It's it's fun and it's 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 not, you know, this one isn't rocket science, but you know, they've been uh, making this app for several years, so it's not something that's going to disappear tomorrow. And uh, if you have a large display and you'd like to be able to focus on on one window at a time, and this is something I use selectively again, like when I'm editing screencasts, um, I always turn this on because I do have other tools available on the screen because I'm looking at other data while I do it. But I just want to focus on that on that production job, and and I just you know hit the the key combination to activate this app, and I'm off to the races. You can set how dark you want to make them. You can set if you want a border. It's got all the cool little features you need. But the real point of it is to make it easy for you to focus on one window. And that one is, you can get in the Mac App Store. Uh, it is $5, $4.99. Easy spend. And also in set app, like many of these are. Yeah, yeah. I think almost all of these are in set app. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, set up really has become a place of like kind of weirdo Mac utilities. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. In addition to like the Ulysses of the world, like the yeah. full-blown apps. They got the they got the heavy hitters and they got the utility players. Yeah, they got them both. Yeah, yeah. This this is cool and it works in light and dark mode. Um, kind of tweaks the visuals depending on the mode you're in. And yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this is cool. I I have played with it in the past. It's not something that I really like. The way I saw this, it's not on my list today, but it's a free app by our friend Marco. Uh, it's Quitter, which yeah, I have a bunch of rules in there to hide or quit apps after they're open for a while so like over time things slowly disappear from my uh from my yeah screen but see a good example for me is when i'm working on a field guide when i'm not recording when i'm doing the edit stuff on it um i i have the editor open, but i also have an air table and i have you know i have um t- notes in a, an obsidian document i have all this stuff and i don't want it to go away I just don't want to find my eyes drifting to it. And this is just enough. Yeah. And you can tune it, you know, however you want. So my 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 advice on this, if you're gonna try this, is just get the keyboard shortcut down and use it on things where they're like, okay, this is serious work. I want to focus on this. And it's like just a nice visual reminder that you have one job right now. Mm-hmm. And then when you're done, turn it off and then go back to goofing off an email or whatever it is you do and don't worry about. It. But having it available to you can be really helpful. Very cool. I've got uh, I got just one left, and I've saved it for last because it's it's bananas. But I love it. It is. Uh, this, I immediately I'm so happy when I saw this. In the <laughs> it is called Einstein. Um, it is an emulator to run the Newton operating system on top of basically anything else. So you can run on to, on top of the Mac. Now, it comes with the general stuff of the world of emulators. Like, they're not going to give you the file you need that you're supposed to, like, you know, go dump the yeah. ROM from a Newton book. That's very easy to find on the internet. You can just go yeah. find it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's cool. Like, the Newton's an awesome platform, and more people should know what it was about. And this is a great way uh, to run it. My favorite little feature, for whatever reason, is it has a backlight button. And you can click it, and it's like the backlight comes on, the window turns green, because the backlight on all the Newtons was green. So much fun. You can install software. You can get, like, the whole experience. And uh, it's just, it really seems, I don't, I don't know the people behind it personally, but it seems like one of those things, like, this is just a, a labor of love that people have of, you know, this platform and want new people to explore it and experience it. And uh, Einstein definitely has a, a place in my heart forever because of it yeah i mean you you don't know them but you know you could be best friends with them. oh yeah no we're we, we would click <laughs> real well yeah yeah i actually linked on mac sparky a little bit uh a few weeks ago uh this infinite macintosh project have you seen this yes that's the the run the various uh versions of old mac os in the browser yeah yeah, and and it's not as good as this because you you're not running it locally you can't load your own data into it as far as i know but like you can load system six or system nine and, and, you know, you can like open up a word processor. It does kind of feel like going back in time mm-hmm. when you, uh, when you load them up, but this is, this is better. Cause this, you could really just kind of have your Newton running virtually on your machine. 
you could like put your calendar in there. That could be your, maybe you should do that, Stephen, for like a, a month. Just like run your whole like productivity system out of your little Mac based Newton. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me uh, open up my emulator so I can see what my afternoon looks like. Yeah. Not the same though, right? Not Can't the same. Man. Yeah. Newtons. So good. You still have working Newtons though, right? Oh, Don't yeah. you have some? Yeah. I got, yeah. in fact, um, I just uh, came across the picture, a picture of it. Um, and one of the release notes conferences that when it was in Indianapolis, um, Greg, the guy who writes drafts, gave me a Newton, like in box. I just came across that picture the other day and made me happy. Yeah, I bet you did. I bet that did. I have uh, another topic for us here. Uh, now we've kind of finished the 20-ish under 20. <laughs> the um, There were a couple that I want to kind of give an honorable mention that just missed, right? They were so close. Like, there are a couple apps. I'm like, man, if this was just a little cheaper, I would have recommended it. And uh, you want to just go through those quickly? Yeah. Yeah, what you got? Acorn. Oh, Crazy yeah. Crazy powerful uh, photo editor. 30 bucks. It's like, you know, Gus Mueller's got to pay for his shoes. I get it. I, I don't need, I don't see how he can get away with selling that for 30 bucks. To tell you the truth. But I don't either. That's, that's a great <laughs> app. And it just missed. The other one is Scapple. It's from the guy who makes Scrivener, but it's like an idea, like mind mapping kind of like writing idea. It, it like really works in conjunction with Scrivener. Twenty ninety nine. He missed by 99 cents. That would have totally been on if it was a dollar cheaper. And then the other one, which is the darling of the Mac Power users of early 2023's CleanShot X is 30 bucks. If that was under 19, if that was under 20, we would have we would have included that one. Yes. CleanShot X continues to be just a really powerful, very useful <laughs> screenshot and markup tool for the Mac. I absolutely adore it. You had a couple too, right? I do. I've got another one from Flying Meat uh, called Retro Batch. And the reason it didn't make the list, there's two versions of Retro Batch. The standard version fits within our rules. The pro version is a little bit more. But think about Retro Batch as like automation for photos. And so we mentioned some other apps like uh, that can rename things or or uh, with image optim can optimize images. Retro Batch does all of that and a lot more. So if you have a bunch of images and you want to adjust the color on all of them, or you need to change something in the metadata or add a watermark to them. You can build these automations in RetroBatch. And it looks not unlike Audio Hijack, where you can drag in the different blocks and like change what it's going to do in what order. And uh, it's really cool. I don't use RetroBatch every day. It's definitely one of those apps that when I need it, it is the only tool I reach for. But uh, if you deal with a lot of photos, like um, I remember when it first came out, I wrote about it some, and I got an email from somebody who was, I think they were a wedding photographer or like a family photographer. Anyway, dealing with a lot of images. And they're like, this basically absorbs like four different utilities I was using for different things on Mac OS because it's really full featured. I mean, you mentioned Acorn 7, which is a full feature photo and graphics editor. A lot of those tools are in uh, Retro Batch, and it's, it's very, very useful. Another one for me is a relative newcomer from Hog Bay Software, and that is Bike Outliner. Uh, it is a super lightweight, super fast. It is so performant. It's it's very impressive. Um, outlining kind of little text editor for the Mac. And uh, it's got rich text editing, which is really cool. But it um, it's like a good text editor and a good outliner. And most of these apps are kind of one, kind of one or the other honestly. Yeah. I, I would just second the nomination there. Anything Jesse Grossjean makes is, is good. Yes. Like he's a very much a quality developer. He also makes task paper and mm-hmm. you may remember right room was very popular for a long time. Oh yeah. I used right room for a long time. Yeah. And, but bike outliner, I feel like is kind of like the latest iteration of what the direction he's been going with simple apps that do powerful things without a lot of bells and whistles. And if you want a simple outliner, this is the one. Yes. And it is like, it's pretty new. It may have launched even this calendar year. If it. No, it was last was year. Was it last year? Okay. Sure. Yeah. But it's new and um, really, really awesome. The The last one for me and the, the ones that just missed, I'm going to mention Piezo by our friends at Rogue Amoeba. It's a very straightforward, simple recording app for the Mac. So 
uh, you can tell Piezo, I want audio from this source or this source, and I want it to be saved this kind of file. So it, it's like a, a a subset of what Audio Hijack can do. Audio Hijack can record anything, right? System audio, application audio. We use it to record our microphones and Zoom at the same time. Piezo's boiled down from that, but it's just twenty five bucks, and it is um, really nice, really polished. It gives you kind of just what you need and, and not much that you don't. And for people who are looking to record audio from their Macs, a lot of people don't need everything that Audio Hijack has to offer. And if you don't, Piezo is a, a great way to start. Definitely one I recommend to people who are, you know, just doing some basic recording on their Macs. Yeah, like I, I still have it installed. And I, just the other day I used it because there was a David Foster Wallace speech. It was like a two-hour speech on YouTube. And I, I don't need to watch him talk for two hours. So I just used pie, a piezo did a verb. I'm going to make that a verb. A piezo did. I like it. I had the audio file. I could just listen to it while I'm pulling weeds. Good stuff. Yeah. This episode of MPU is made possible by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building a brand and growing your business online. With Squarespace, you can stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, products, services, and even content. With Squarespace, you can sell your products in your online store. Like I said, physical or digital, Squarespace has all the tools you need to start selling. And you can communicate with customers with Squarespace's email campaigns. Why not encourage site visitors to sign up as email subscribers and then start them on the journey to becoming loyal customers? You start with an email template and customizing it uh, with your brand ingredients and color so it all looks cohesive with your site. It's all really easy Plus, Squarespace's built-in analytics measure the impact of every email sent. Those analytic tools also, of course, apply to the website. They're all really easy to use and insightful. Uh, This really cool suite of integrated features makes it easy to maximize your prominence among search results. I absolutely love building on Squarespace. It is the platform I turn to time and time again if I'm helping somebody else with their project, doing something here at Relay FM, whatever it is. Squarespace is where I start. So head on over to squarespace.com slash MPU for a free trial with no credit card required. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code MPU to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, that's squarespace.com slash MPU and the code MPU to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. That's squarespace.com slash MPU and the code MPU to get 10% off your first purchase and to show your support for the show. Our thanks to Squarespace for their support of Mac Power Users and Relay FM. So those are those are some that just just missed. And I, I do think it'll be interesting maybe at some point in the future to expand our rules. But 20 under 20 is such a uh, you know easy phrase for a, a title. We had to go with it. Yeah. Uh Hall of Fame. We've got yes. some Hall of Famers. Um the, uh, I'm adding one right okay. now by Fiat. I'm putting it in the outline. Do you agree? A one hundred percent. All yeah. right. So I'll I'll say that one first. Bartender. Like yes, it comes up. That's that comes up on the show like that all the time. It's it's called bartender. We should have to drink when we talk about it because it's <laughs> just it's such such a great app. And in the age of the notch, it's even better app. You know because you want to manage all the stuff in your menu bar. Bartender mm-hmm. is the one, and uh, that's under twenty bucks. Yeah. Just just today, so I went and spoke to journalism students at the University of Memphis, and I always think about you when I talk and use slides, because your philosophy about slides and my philosophy about slides are very different. I spoke for an hour and a half and had four slides, and oh they boy. each just had a sentence oh on them. Like, <laughs> very no, minimal, I, very I like that. I yeah, like you that. like that, but then you're also the guy who's like, has a $100 bill that like bursts into flames at just the right moment in the right sentence, you know? You got some polish to you. Yeah, I, I, I would have, I might have had four hundred, but none of them would have, had, have had many words on them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do slides full of text. But um, so, anyways, I was in this uh, classroom or this lab or whatever in the journalism building, and you know, had HDMI, and of course, I have this lovely MacBook Pro that has an HDMI port, so I didn't need a dongle. And I was really glad I had Bartender because, like, oh, my menu bar is just really like nice and clean and tidy, so they don't, you know, see the four thousand. Mac utilities I'm running. Yeah. 
you want to do the next uh, Hall of Fame induction? Yes. For me, this is Hall of Fame, not in the sense that we talk a lot about it on Mac Power Users, but when I think about Mac apps, when I think about Mac developers, Transmit from Panic always comes to mind. Uh, It's an FTP client, but it also connects to Backblaze, Google Drive, Dropbox, Rackspace, (laughs) all sorts of stuff. And it is uh, really, really nicely done. It's the FTP client that I've used on the Mac basically as long as I've used a Mac and could afford software, right? I mean, there's there's other free services out there or free apps that do this. Uh, Transmit's really nice. It has some really nice features um, where you can like store your, your logon keys within it. Uh, it syncs. So if you have more than one Mac, it will... Um, keep all of your logins and stuff all, all nice and sync. Um, you can use it to sync a local and a remote uh, like repository of files. So if you need to yeah. like quickly clone everything, like an S3 bucket, you can just tell it to do it and transmit. You're not down there like dragging folder by folder, image by image. Uh, it's really nice. So if you deal a lot with server stuff uh, on the Mac, Transmit 5, is a uh, a real a real shining example of how to do that well. Yeah, agreed. It's just like so many of these apps are just good execution and good user interface. It's the those two things together that that gets it to the top of the list. And drafts is the next Hall of Famer. Uh, we talk about it so often. I mean, you were mentioning earlier about IA Writer didn't stick with you. It didn't stick with me either. I really tried it for a couple months and. At the end of the day, I just write in drafts. You know, if I'm going to do any kind of text, I just write it in drafts. It's on all my devices. I can dictate to my watch and get it in there. Um, there's a lot of people doing more with drafts than what I do because it's become such a beast over the years in terms of automation tools and, and customization. But I just need a simple place to write text, and that's what it does for me. And uh, it's under 20 bucks, and it's, uh, it's a great app. And then there's PCalc. Oh, PCalc. The calculator that keeps giving. <laughs> it it is it just turned thirty, I think. Twenty five yeah. or thirty years old. And I mean James is one of the longest running developers on the Macintosh. And I, I, I use the full name on purpose because Peacock has its roots well before OS ten. Yeah. Uh, James also built Drag Thing and some other other apps and he has new apps now, like uh Dice by PCalc, which is really a great if you're playing uh, D&D or need uh, dice for something. It's on the Mac and iPhone and iPad and everything. But uh, PCalc, I think, is is a great example of a developer who takes an idea, you know, like, we'll make a calculator app. Like, well, h- how how far could that go? The answer is very far. And you can do so many things in PCalc. I I, I just scratch the surface of what it can do. Cause I, I don't need all the scientific notation and all that stuff, but it's all there if you do. And um, yeah, it's just, it's so good. Well, there you have it. Uh, 20 ish apps for under 20 bucks with a few extras and hall of famers. Uh, let us know what we missed. If there's something other $20 we should have talked about, let us know this isn't the last time we'll do a show like this. And uh, I'm thinking openly, Steven, Maybe we should have a Mac Power Users Hall of Fame for apps in general, regardless of price. I think that may be something we may need to do someday because there are some Hall of Famers for sure. Um, Either way, uh, we are the Mac Power Users. You can find us at relay.fm slash MPU. Uh, You can find the forums at talk.macpowerusers.com if you want to go in and and weigh in. Uh, And we want to thank our sponsors today, 1Password, Text Expander, ZocDoc, and Squarespace. And we'll see you next time.